Good evening. I'm Erica Sargent bringing you a special report here on CBS News Chicago. We're following breaking news. Two people shot inside the fashion outlets of Chicago in Rosemont, about 20 minutes from downtown Chicago. Our Charlie Damar is now there live on the scene. Charlie, what can you tell us? And Eric, pretty chaotic here at the Fashion Outlet Malls in Rosemont. We know that two people have been shot here tonight. Rosemont police calling this an isolated shooting. This is not an active shooter, but this scene is far from clear. You can see right behind me there are people who are standing. They've just been uh, let out of the mall. We've seen people coming out of the mall in droves. Uh, they've been let out by a heavily armed uh, member of the SWAT team. Uh, they are going right now uh, store by store through the mall, clearing out uh, this mall and clearing people uh, as they go and make their checks. Uh, if we take a look at some video from inside the mall, you can see uh, more of how this played out uh, tonight. We heard from several people tonight saying that there were several uh, shots that they heard throughout the mall. And uh, we've heard many stories uh, of people hiding in, in stores, people helping one another get to safety. And we heard from uh, Stringer Harris, who happens to be a community activist. We heard from him a short time ago. He actually was inside the mall. Um, I was upstairs shopping and um, I heard a couple of shots go off, uh, probably about four or five shots. Um, and it sounded like they came from the food court area. At which time people started to run, uh, people dropped their clothes, they dropped the, you know, their, their, uh, whatever they were shopping for, they just literally dropped it and just started running. Um, picked up their kids out of their own strollers um, and just began running. Well, I work following the third floor um, at Tory Birch, so I was in the back, so I wasn't really able to hear anything. I just know a lot of people came running to the back room, and that's when people were saying that they heard like gunshots, but it was more like like multiple gunshots, so it wasn't just like a single bullet or something like that. So understandably so, the people who were inside the mall and have made their way out, they right now are trying to meet up with loved ones and friends, and that's really been a challenge because, as you can imagine, there are so many uh, first responders here at the mall right now. It is a pretty chaotic scene. Uh, Rosemont Police is saying if you are trying to meet up with a loved one, to meet up at the Caddyshack restaurant. It's just behind me. It's here on the R Rosemont uh, Fashion Mall outlet grounds. Uh, that is where you can meet your loved ones at the Caddyshack restaurant. As for the shooter, uh, police don't believe that he is still here. They believe that he has uh, left the scene here. They're actively searching for whoever uh, is responsible for the shooting tonight. They said there is no threat to the general public. Again, Rosemont police calling this an isolated shooting where two people uh, have been shot. This is still a very active uh, scene tonight, Erica. Yeah, Charlie, we're talking about a mall that has about 130 different stores, two levels there, so I can understand it's going to take some time to clear everybody out. Uh, we see a lot of the flashing lights behind you, and it seemed like there were still emergency uh, ambulances, EMTs, on the scene there. Have you noticed any activity with them? Because other than the two people shot, it, have you heard of anybody else needing any other treatment? No one additional. We've heard of those two uh, people who have been transported and are being treated at local hospitals. But this seems to be a pretty heavy staging area right behind me here for uh, fire department ambulances. Again, uh, when an event like this happens, it, it is an all call. Uh, you know, there's definitely going to be more resources um, than needed because, you know, when they get those initial calls, first responders, they don't necessarily know what they're uh, getting into uh, to begin with. So that's why we definitely see a, a larger presence than just uh, the need for two people. But as of now, Rosemont Police telling us that it is two people who have been shot. That shooter is at large tonight, uh, and there's a pretty active search. Uh, for whoever is responsible for the shooting here tonight, Erica. Yeah, Charlie, you know, I was looking at a map just to get a sense. There, there's some anchor shops like Bloomingdale's, and I know the gentleman you were talking to, he was standing near one of the Prada stores there. But can you give us the lay of the land, exactly where you are in relation to a lot of the exits that are around the mall area for people to get out there? Yeah, if we actually swing back around, if that's possible, Jeff, uh, this is one of the main uh, entrances. If you look at uh, the mall entrance, you can see the mall entrance sign there. This is one of the uh, main entrances here. But as you know, if you're familiar with uh, the outlet malls here, this is a, a massive sprawling uh, mall here yeah, in Rosemont. 
um, but this is used as one of the main entrances uh, of the mall here and that's where we're, we're literally standing across here and this is where people are being escorted um, out of the mall this is where you've seen police uh, taking people it's just been kind of waves of people Presumably, you know, as officers are going store by store and clearing them, they're taking the, that cluster of people and allowing them to leave. One of the problems that we've also seen, uh, some of these people are waiting here, they're trying to get to their cars mm -hmm. and they're in that heavily, that lot with all of the uh, fire trucks and ambulances, so they can't get to their cars yet. They don't know when they're going to be able to get to their cars uh, and there really is no place for them to sit and wait. Uh, so a lot of them are just forced to, you know, stand around uh, here in the cold, right, at least for right now, guys. Yeah, Charlie, stay with me here. I want to read a couple of the tweets that are coming from Rosemont Public Safety, their official Twitter account, account and they take us through some of what you were saying, Charlie, in terms of a staging area set up, that for media, but also for emergency personnel. And uh, the area where they want to have reunification is the Caddyshack restaurant and that as you were mentioning is right behind you there the address for anyone that needs to get there who is not as familiar 9546 Balmoral Avenue in Rosemont there Charlie and I see you're zooming in uh, your camera your phot photojournalist here we are seeing some of the officers on the scene that are with many of the, probably the customers and employees that were inside there Charlie so uh, my understanding is that the two people were taken to the hospital or waiting to get an update on their condition but Charlie again what were you hearing about the injuries to the two people that were confirmed shot out there we haven't heard uh, anything official from Rosemont police about the severity of the injuries but yeah as you mentioned we're seeing more reunions here uh, you're seeing these officers with their long guns uh, that they walked some of the people uh, from inside the mall out uh, this is the, you know, you see people hugging right here, uh, you know, obviously very stressful uh, moments for all these people not knowing what was going on inside. I talked to, uh, you just heard from her moments ago, that young girl who works here, she said she works in the, the Tory Birch store, and she said that they were inside the store for about an hour and they didn't know what was going on. They were uh, in the room, people started running to the back of the room. Uh, for cover and they just kind of hunkered down there for an hour and they just heard banging um, periodically and here you see a, a young girl walking uh, you know across the street um, it, this has obviously been a, a pretty emotional uh, night for for everybody and they're just trying to go home to their cars and we do see officers now taking a big group uh, right here uh, my guess is to their cars I talked to some of these people who were in this group and uh, these were some of the folks who needed to get to their cars and it looks like this officer uh, is going to escort them to their cars so these folks can uh, go home and and go on with their nights and, and get out of here yeah Charlie so this is a mall we're talking uh, about we have seen Charlie, I was just going to mention, as you, as you said earlier, this is a massive mall, and we're talking about a Friday night. Uh, this happened a few hours. There was still a lot of shopping time here because the mall usually closes at about 8 p.m. on the Friday, according to their, their website here. So you can imagine on a Friday night, especially now that some of the restrictions have been lifted, a lot of people were out probably enjoying themselves. It, unexpected, of course, that this would happen at uh, the fashion outlets out there. But uh, uh, thank you for pointing out here some of the reunification because, you know, I know a lot of people are relieved that they've been able to see their loved ones. And we saw, as you mentioned, Charlie, a lot of the, um, uh, the people on the scene there even in hugging, embracing their loved ones, being reunited with them. Um, Charlie, anything else you're noticing? I see a lot of movement now right there behind you as it seems like some people are being able to be escorted off to the side. Yeah, that's that same group that's uh, being escorted, uh, it looks like, out of here, uh, which is a good sign that police are, um, you know, allowing people to, to go to their cars and uh, move on. So hopefully that is a sign that things may be winding down here again. Uh, police still are looking for that one person, that the shooter, at least they've identified uh, at least one person that they're looking for tonight who is responsible um, for this shooting. But again, uh, obviously a traumatic experience that all of these folks have gone through tonight and uh, hopefully that they're going to be able to, to go home now. But as I was saying before, I, I've heard a number of stories. Uh, I talked to a young gentleman who said he heard the shots and, and at first he looked at his mom's face and his mom got worried and, and tried shielding him and he was there with his younger brother. I know sort of a chain reaction that he then jumped into big brother mode 
and shielded his brother and they stayed in a store for some time until they were cleared uh, by police. Uh, so, you know, this was, uh, like you mentioned, it's a Friday night, people are here, it's cold out, uh, people are enjoying the mall. Uh, there's a number of restaurants here. It's a, you know, it's a, it, a you know, a good, good night to go to a mall. Uh, so nothing out of the ordinary that these people were doing uh, forced to just hunker down and, and wait this uh, terrifying, terrifying mm. scenario out. Yes, definitely, Charlie. And, and just a little bit of background on where you are located now. This is about five minutes from O'Hare Airport. And even on their website, they tout that a lot of international visitors and people from other states come in. And this is one of the prime spots because it's one of the, uh, they say it's in, in this area, the largest outlet mall of its kind. We're talking about one that draws a diverse group of shoppers because you know, on that top level, you have a lot of your high-end stores like the Prada outlet where the gentleman you were talking to was standing by and then on the lower level a lot of the stores that um, you may see in a more uh, general malls like your Aeropostal and and uh, uh, stores of that kind so this is definitely a a gathering place a very popular in the Chicago area just about 20 minutes outside of uh, the downtown area Charlie so if anybody is just joining us now we just want to take you back to what we've learned so far so Charlie take us through the uh, the timeline in terms of what you have heard happen it and also the eyewitness accounts that you uh, were able to speak to uh, once you got out there on the scene yeah, so Rosemont police making it very clear this is not an active shooter. They are calling this an isolated shooting, a targeted shooting, if you will. Two people uh, have been shot tonight. We know that they were taken to area hospitals. Right now, uh, police are searching for the shooter. Uh, they don't believe that that person is still on the mall property. Uh, we've seen a heavy police presence. They have set a perimeter all around uh, the outlet malls here in Rosemont trying to find out who is responsible. Obviously, there are cameras all over this place, so uh, presumably they are going through uh, surveillance trying to piece together the shooter's movements to try and track them down um, quickly tonight. Uh, Rosemont Police also making it clear that there is no threat to the general public. Uh, it sounds like they do have an idea of who they are looking for. But yeah, from talking to people who are inside the mall, they said, you know, they were just going through the mall like normal uh, and they heard several shots. Um, any I've heard tonight anywhere from about five to nine shots, somewhere in that range. Uh, someone said it was near the food court. I've heard varying accounts of, of where it occurred. Obviously, uh, a bullet, a gunshot is going to, to echo in a, in a mall. Um, but people describing it being very loud. Uh, hearing chaos, seeing people run right away. Uh, talked to some people who said, you know, I had the choice. I could have, I, I either could run, get out, sort of fl fight or flight uh, scenario, or I could help people try and get them to safety until we're able to figure out what's going on until police uh, get here. And uh, I don't know if we have the, the sound uh, queued up, but uh, an individual who I talked to, he chose to stay. Uh, he said, I was going to stay there with as many people and get as many people into shelter and to be able to hide. And he says, until we saw police, until we were um, let go by, until we were let go by police, um, he was going to stay there as long as it took to make pe make sure people were safe. Uh, let's listen to that sound now. Um, I was up there shopping and um, I heard a couple of shots go off, uh, probably about four or five shots. Um, and it sounded like they came from the food court area, at which time people started to run. Um, people dropped their clothes. They dropped the, you know, their, their, uh, whatever they were shopping for. They just literally dropped it and just started running. Um, picked up their kids out of their own strollers um, and just began running. Well, I work all the way on the third floor um, at Tory Birch. So I was in the back, so I wasn't really able to hear anything. I just know a lot of people came running to the back room. And that's when people were saying that they heard, like, gunshots but it was more like like multiple gunshots so it wasn't just like a single bullet or something like that and charlie that man that you were speaking to he was the one that was up on that top level looking down and shot this video we want to, sh to walk our viewers through that you could see an officer there armed walking through the lower level that level one there of the mall that's the man who said that he could hear the gunshots which he thought were coming from below um, and now here you also see officers and some of the people standing and it as you mentioned, just the idea that you're in a large shopping area and you hear gunshots, you can just imagine how terrifying it must be. Um, so I commend the man on his calmness and being able to show us this. And it, thankfully, he is safe and now out of that mall. But taking. 
gives us some perspective there on what it was like shortly after those gunshots were fired, Char Charlie. Erica, you cut out on the last part of that. Can you repeat that question? Yeah, I was just mentioning that that video really gave us some perspective on what was happening in the minutes after those gunshots were fired in terms of the officer presence out there armed and walking through the mall. And as you were saying, you know, we're hearing and just about, I'd say about 15 minutes ago, uh, the authorities out there tweeted that they are still working to clear that area, right? Yeah, this is still active. As you can see, we moved a little closer uh, to that parking lot that I was talking about. Uh, but you can see, we've seen here uh, police and fire from several different departments. We've seen Norridge out here, Desplaines, uh, obviously Rosemont Police, Franklin Park. Um, there are a number uh, of departments here uh, that were, uh, you know, working this scene, obviously. How's it going? Were you guys by chance inside? Were you guys inside tonight? No? Okay. Be safe. Have a good night. Um, a, a number uh, of departments here uh, who are working it. Yeah, it is far from, from clear, at least for now, but you can tell that the sense of urgency has definitely uh, reduced. Uh, even in the probably hour that we've been here, uh, you do feel a sense, um, I don't want to say of calm, but it is not uh, as intense in the, as those initial moments. Um, as, as we said at the top, uh, police do believe that this is a targeted shooting. They have a good idea of who they are looking for. Still a lot of police activity in the area, um, but as for the mall proper, uh, things have uh, calmed down just a bit. Charlie, if you could, I know you were saying that you weren't too far from the reunification area. We're talking about the Murray Brothers Caddyshack restaurant that's located at 9546 Balmoral Avenue there. So just in terms of perspective, where is that reunification area as to where you're standing and the, the fashion outlets? Yeah, I know there's a lot of lights, and uh, I don't know if we're going to be able to see it, Jeff. We might have to move, but uh, beyond this fire truck here, there's a green neon sign. I don't know if you're able to see it from there. Yes. Uh, but that is the Caddyshack restaurant, where that is the reunification uh, point there. It's a huge green neon sign. Uh, from where we were just standing, you know, it's, uh, it, it's an easy walk to get to. Um, from you know pretty much any point in in the mall and you know obviously a central point to the mall uh which is understandably probably uh why they chose uh, that restaurant uh, for the reunification uh point tonight yeah charlie as you were mentioning that spot so close to where the fashion outlets are that public safety Twitter account for Rosemont saying that they want any friends or family to meet there if they are looking for someone who could have been inside that mall and you know it, it in terms of just the sheer size of this facility, as you as you said, it's going to take some time for them to clear it out because we are talking about upwards of 130 stores and that on top of that, a lot of people may be going out there on a Friday night just for drinks or to meet people at one of the um, the fast food areas within that shopping area. So um, a large shopping center that is quite popular in the Chicago area and on a Friday night, for it to be one of the indoor shopping centers, it's got to be quite the draw considering the weather that we're dealing with right now, Charlie. Yeah, absolutely. This was a busy mall. Uh, when we showed up, you know, there was a number of people who had already been um, evacuated and cleared uh, by police, um, and there were still dozens upon dozens of people coming out um, with first responders, just to give you know an idea. And this is just one of the entrances that we were standing at. So uh, you can imagine how many people were inside the mall uh, at the time. There's the theater, the Rosemont Theater, which is just right across here. So a lot of attractions just within uh, this short scale, uh, short spot uh, within the mall. Uh, there's a lot to do here. Uh, we have seen a number of fire trucks uh, start to leave. Uh, again, I don't know if that's an indication of, again, things uh, wrapping up, but uh, we do see a number of fire trucks uh, beginning to pull out here. Um, as it does seem the focus now has shifted to uh, trying to find uh, the shooter from tonight. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, this was a, a very busy, uh, busy mall here tonight, Erica. Yeah, and we do want to emphasize that uh, the public safety officials out there, police, they're saying there is no active shooter, that the person that they believe committed this crime is no longer there at the mall. So now it is a matter of going through this very large shopping outlet and clearing each 
of those areas. Uh, we haven't received an update uh, recently from them on the status of that offender, and we're also keeping our eye on the two victims. We were hearing some rumblings of some updates on conditions, but we we won't report anything until we have it confirmed. But at last check, there were two people that were shot and were transported to the hospital. So, Charlie, from your vantage point, I know you were saying that it looks like some of the, the fire uh, department trucks are leaving. Are you still seeing people coming out of any of the exits there at the fashion outlets? We are not. We have not seen that. And you can see one of the heavily uh, armored uh, SWAT team members walking now. This is what people who were hiding inside the mall uh, were greeted to. Probably a, a relief seeing uh, someone like that with a long gun. Um, clearing it, telling them that everything was okay, that the coast was clear. Um, but we have not seen uh, any more people uh, since we first uh, broke in. We haven't seen any more people coming from the mall. Again, we're just at one entrance here, um, but uh, we again, uh, it does seem like the flow of people uh, has stopped from, uh, from inside the mall. Okay, Charlie, thank you. We're hearing that uh, not too long from now, we will receive an update, a media briefing there. They have a staging area set up not too far from there, 9500 block of Technology Boulevard. So as soon as we get that update on everything that's going on at the mall, the status of those, those two people that were shot and taken to the hospital and any potential capture of any offender, that has not happened at this point. But if we hear any update on that, we'll bring it to you live. Thank you, Charlie, for your coverage. I know you will continue to stay out there and bring us updates. And as we get them, we will bring them to you right here live on CBS News Chicago.